The following recording comes to you from Anthology Film Archives in New York City. Saying my God and becoming speechless. Well, that would, that's, that, that would be the ultimate driving uh, hope in this sort of situation. That's what we're moving but, towards. But I wonder if you're not moving the other direction, if you're not pursuing the accidents instead of the control and the supreme artistic expression. N never accident. Remember that, uh, that in, o in order to control, to, there is practice as severe as the piano practicing or the practicing of any instrument to keep the, the, the control, the body control between camera and the person shooting. Uh, uh, very uh, much under control. It would be as ridiculous to call this an accident happening as it would be to uh, to call uh, um, a fine pianist playing a, a modern composition an accident just because it's unusual what he's doing. His control is there. If you mean is there no control and is the camera flung about wildly, I suppose that it, it is among a lot of uh, uh, not, not, not so intelligent, very young people misunderstanding the direction. But among those who've moved towards it gradually, See, I always have known the difference because I've had to earn my living in order to keep making my own works by working in the commercial medium for, for eight years. So I, I, there's absolute maximum control. You, you can see many of my films are on television. Some I'd be ashamed to name what they were, and some I'm, I'm like the, uh, the piece on Sartre's nausea that uh, I'm quite proud of, but uh, that is quite involved with. But with my own work, friends, I would never make a statement like that quite proud of, because there, the, so there's that distinction. But... Um, um, I, in other words, there's ample way to prove that I have the ability to control technically. So it is a drive towards some new way in which the medium can sing, dance, and be, uh, be uh, almost something that uh, I feel the necessity for, and then sometimes I say the world feels the necessity for it, but that doesn't matter. I feel it enough to, to, to um, not pursue uh, older methods when when uh, so, some new method is is opening my own eyes uh, as a result of my accepting it and dancing with the camera in this new way. But it's a method that is supposed to open eyes and yet it seems to me it's exactly at the level of the images you get that possibly you fail. Because I do not retain uh, the sense of vision and of images from your movies and I, I have never heard your movies discussed yes, in terms you, of their you, you images are, but only of the movement. For instance, Paul, you, you are a master of a, uh, in being a commentator upon an older movement, and you, you're bound to have, as a result of this, uh, blockages toward anything. But there. I also have an eye, and other people around me have eyes. What I'm curious to know is, perhaps I am blocked, but then are there other people who, after having seen, say, Anticipation of the Night, can discuss it with you in terms of its images and in terms of a new vision oh, they have my. had? Oh, sure. Well, and uh, they, they, they do retain and can describe the images. Oh, oh of course. Yeah, particularly, uh, and I'm not referring to artists here. Actually, mm -hmm. uh, uh, the the some of the more ideal audiences uh, for for this kind of experience are those who do not come uh, trying to, uh, uh, to who do not come and who ask their questions and are intrigued by the newness of something and by and by the moving perception that way. They're not there, for instance, like you find in New York to collect data for the new cocktail party or something like that. They're they're honestly there because something is wanting and they know it in their own vision and they become quite quite uh, involved i mean perfectly people in all walks of life and, and and that sort of thing and that kind of audience is far more important to me and and i think to any uh, artist than the intellectual uh, well i i quite agree about uh uh, I'm, I'm not making film my films for New York SC. No, I'm, I'm aware of this. No. And I, for instance, a number of years ago, loved uh, Isu's Venom and Eternity, most especially for his statement that photography was too banal, that it needed to rot. And I think this is largely true, and particularly of, of American movies and, and somewhat of, of European films also. Mm -hmm. uh, but I am not sure that the direction you're moving in liberates the eye uh, or, or help to see well, a different way. Well, you see, Paul, I think what we're involved in here is that you are receiving what you need, perhaps, from the older form of vision. And, and if no, no, case, I know I'm not receiving what I need, but I'm not getting anything from your work. <laughs> you see, I make films for out of my own deepest necessities. And uh, then uh, what validity they have or don't have in relationship to you, I'm joyful when they seem to be of help to people or of excitement or joy. But there's no real concern that way. I, go, I feel a responsibility to try to get them out because I think that it is badly needed, actually. But if it turned out that they weren't, it would not interfere with my work in the least. So in that sense, it, wh where there is, where, where one is not getting what one is needing and can't get it from, 
from my work or the work of my related contemporaries and can't get it from well, no, Bergman who, and can't get it no. from Hollywood, then I say, ah, you should make films yourself because uh, there may be something there. But ah, but who are your related contemporaries then? Related contemporaries, well, let's see. Marie Mencken is uh, actually uh, um, one of the most important. Uh, um, actually, in a way, I owe a great freeing of my own uh, 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 trapped vision to some of her early work, particularly things like uh, visual variations on the Gucci um, uh, and, and uh, Hurry Hurry and some of those small fragmented pieces. Joseph Cornell, for instance, uh, has his films, who, which have practically remained almost entirely unseen, been an immense I can't say, inspiration. I do not know Cornell's work. Immense uh, in, inspiration in on, on my work, and and he, for instance, does not move the camera violently or wildly in, in any sense at all. It's some other much more subtle thing there, and uh, um, oh, uh, y younger people. Uh, well, this would be. Oh, I've found some things in, in so many different people's work, even uh, some of Markopoulos' work, particularly more recent work that hasn't been seen around here. He's a related contemporary, and in, in, uh, um, in, in even, even uh, for instance, Broughton's work is much different from mine, but there, there is a sense of aliveness, which is the dominant thing in his work, which makes him a related contemporary. The camera does not move wildly, but there is always a sense of, of the human being uh, searching, moving behind it, and many people uh, will attack, for instance, even his films as being uh, to amateur is the word they usually throw up, and of course I'm, I'm rather delighted by it. Yes, then, I'm, I'm an amateur filmmaker. I make home movies, and uh, out of the home living environment, and Broughton does not do this at all, but this aliveness of the poet searching through through the vision is, is related to what, what made Cocteau great in, 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 in Blood of a Poet for instance. And, oh, contemporaries, I mean, you, you, you could actually, an interesting thing, you know at Brussels that out of, a, out of all, a fi, about a thousand films submitted, 130 were chosen to be admitted to the final competition. Of these, almost 60 were from the United States. Of these, 20, I thought, were immensely important films. And, um, I mean, that, it shows, for instance, something very alive in terms of moving vision is happening in this country at the moment, which is Sadly enough, you know, un, un, uh, pretty unrecognized. Good. All the names I will leave out in this situation, but there's uh, names. There's a lot of people who are searching, uh, in a way, related to myself. And, well, uh, I think, aren't, aren't you considering these contemporaries as related to you simply because they're searching, uh, because their methods and techniques are, are very different from yours, for the most part? I would say are. Broughton's method and yours have almost nothing in common. Uh, nothing except the the alive sense behind the camera. Nothing more in common than, let's say, my films and this this unknown newsreel photographer who did the magnificent uh, explosion of the Zeppelin. Ah, well, let's let's get back to that Zeppelin because uh, it's a it's a marvelous example and it seems to make your point. But suppose, say, instead of uh, it being a Zeppelin he's photographing, suppose he's on a highway. Uh, as you are in a film and photographing the the, uh, the signs and lights going by, uh, does it then have the search for truth and meaning that it has with the Zeppelin? And does the accidental then become so important and so beautiful? The accidental is 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 not uh, in the normal sense of the word involved. Accidents happen at times, and I leave myself open to being able to look at them because these are sometimes the most important areas where one can grow out of what one is doing towards something else. It's like a revelation. In one sense, I don't believe in the accident in this sense. For instance, the most interesting photographs that amateurs will show you of their, uh, of their trip to Wyoming or someplace where they took, are, are the double exposures, the overexposures, the underexposures, because these, through accident, so-called, are expressing deeply, in many cases, not all, but in some cases, quite clearly, they, they will be expressions of something that the, um, well, you could say in a simple Freudian sense, something that the photographer couldn't face that made him make the accident. And, and therefore, the kind of way that he made the accident subconsciously will have to do with what's uh, involved in the vision that ends up, which he'll call an accident and naturally reject bitterly. Uh, but sometimes those are the most revealing of all the photographs. Sometimes they're just a mess because the person is a mess. But if the person is, is very... Uh, excited and alive, their accidents begin to be uh, more and more revealing. Um, and, and so in that sense, I do, when an accident occurs, I'm, I'm, I'm quite capable of seeing it, I hope. You know, I try to. 
But the work is not based on this premise. For instance, with those lights that move by are not just throwing the camera out the window of the car and having lights move. Those city blocks were driven around and around and around until the way in which those lights would be moving was, was structured in the way in which I was thinking, feeling in the mind, and then uh, so that it, but, but in a way different than your expectations, because it's a way related to music, not, not related to drama. The prime inspiration source for anticipation of the night, for instance, of our, the, the, uh, the pieces, uh, some of the later pieces of Webern, and, uh, and some of the pieces of Bach, such as uh, uh, the Fugue. I, I wonder Fugue. If, if there's any way of, of making a distinction in your work, or if you make a distinction between, say, uh, a great accident, a great vision that has drama and that has beauty, and uh, and what you use as the material for, say, making a, a musical vision uh, on film. Or whether, say, if, uh, if you're looking for a new way of seeing, if perhaps everything in your experience doesn't seem to you, you know, equally valid with everything else. No. This would be moving into the area of chance operations, and um, uh, I think what you're talking about here, and uh, uh, fairly strongly, and I think it's a thing that has to do, again, particularly with my generation, or perhaps uh, with a generation that's more coming than mine, a rejection of, of chance operations. And uh, it's, it's, I, I have utilized them to a certain extent, but always to reveal something which will then allow me to go on and edit the thing or photograph it differently, not to uh, just entirely incorporate the play of chance happenings in What it. kind of visual happenings, say, uh, are you working on at the moment in your new long film? This is the new long film is called uh, the Dog Star Man, and uh, it's this is a, it's a well I can trace the working process in this. It's uh, like first of all I had the fee I had absolute necessity to some sense re revitalize or relate to ritual the whole daily happenings of our our life, with between myself, my wife, and our children, and and our animals and our house, and I I, I conceived this as being a fairly short film, and that I I would t pick any occupation. Uh, that, that seemed uh, simple on the outside uh, to stand for the man's whole life work. So I chose, without qu quite realizing why I was choosing this, to be a woodman climbing a mountain, chopping down a tree, and uh, um, um, uh, then I began photographing this and I ended up with over 10,000 feet of color film, so I knew I was involved in an immense work. And other elements entered into it then, the woman as imagined, the children as imagined, the man the only solitary real figure. Uh, the, 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 the significances of the woodsman began to emerge into it, the white uh, t tree that he chops down as a structure. And the photographing was mostly done when suddenly the whole deluge of the mythological relationship, poetically speaking, of this film came, came uh, to me before I began the editing stage. So you see there's quite a split. The, the, the photographing has been, in much of my work, more a gathering of material and a pure searching uh, uh, occurrence. And then, uh, but there's an immense uh, split between that and the editing stage, where this material, I go into the editing room, I have this material which, which makes a world. I, I, I let this world begin to have its own life and then begin editing it according to all of, of knowledge and feeling. And searching continues there too, but it's an utterly different kind than the shooting. Now these are my own working methods. I don't know whether, but finally, this what started seemed to start as a very uh, simple kind of statement. Became related to all creation mythologies of the world, and even interrelated to uh, uh, the scientific creation mythologies. And I do do look at them that way. For instance, uh, George Gamow, whom I know, his his creation of the universe uh, began to be very related by tracing back poetically the word levels of it to, to uh, Greek mythology and therefore to everything else. Creation of the world, creation of the universe. Then comes immense studies in Fraser, in Graves, in, in Freud even. Uh, and, and finally the work begins to emerge uh, across the editing table with its more poetic relationships established, poetic rather than dramatical. And this very simple action of climbing this hill, chopping down this tree, and imagining these other happenings, and uh, 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 it looks like it's going to be a four and a half hour film. So far, only the prelude is done. I don't know what the. Total what can you show of these happenings? 
And how can you recreate them or convey the feeling of them? What happens? Uh, uh, say the mythological references. Well, because the they, they are the around us. They do. This was the immense discovery of the mm -hmm. film. They are in our everyday life, except uh, we, we, are, we don't perceive them so easily. In, yes, in but how filmically can you communicate this to other people? How do you mean how filmically? I mean, how, what, what is your, say, photographic means uh, for breaking in this whole associational system? Um, well, uh, it isn't a process of communicating, but to, to make their relationships, uh, cl uh, the clarity of the relationships of these sim sim poetical, symbolical happenings uh, is, is uh, well, through the techniques that emerge while making the film. In this case, it involves um, multiple superimpositions, hand painting on film, microscopy photography, um, uh, um, uh, everything that is needed that, that, uh, that does reveal more and more the actual by relating say objects that are photographed in life to other objects in such a way that they begin to emerge not not as symbols we don't want symbols here but they begin to their their relationships their dance living relationships begin to emerge and then we find these relationships have been uh, structured in other ways in in uh, very symbolical material that's the way it happens is that clear well, not completely. For instance, in, in your work, Dog, Star, Man, uh, I can see what you can do with dog and man, but how do you get to star? How I mean, just I, concretely. How do, how do I get to star? Yeah. How I became involved, uh, uh, star is, is an interesting one. I did a great deal of shooting of the sun while, while photographing it, and that, that is the star in this case that I'm concerned with primarily. And um, and uh, even to the extent then when I felt the necessity, I went and, and the only footage in the film, for instance, which is bought, which I didn't shoot myself, I, I shot uh, telescope shots of the moon and so on, but uh, I bought uh, from the High Altitude Observatory uh, explosions on the sun material. And this is integrated within the, st in the structure of the work out of the necessity to have it. It works always that way, somehow, out of the necessity to have it. And then if it whether it works or remains within the film in that way in which it's placed has to do with me as whether it continues to reveal deeper and deeper the, 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 uh, the, the happening that I'm after, whether it continues to speak to me after viewing, after viewing, after viewing. And when it does, then it remains in that structure in that way. I, I see what you're getting at, uh, and uh, I, I think you talk your films brilliantly. The question is whether this comes across on film. Well, the problem here is, no, that I'm really not a very good talker, but I have the advantage which most people don't have. I see my films many, many times. But this could be a disadvantage, because you may think that, that other people can see in them what you wanted to put there. I don't care, because I'm not concerned with what other people see there. See, I'm not making them for other people. Well, this this is always a tricky question in the art, isn't it? I, I have heard you described by by another filmmaker as a genius without talent. And you see what he meant? You you are obviously an immensely creative person with an immense fund of theories about the film, some of them very exciting. But the question is whether you have the talent to put this in your own work. Uh, talent is something that only arises in my life usually when I'm making a commercial work and I can draw immense uh, salaries making commercial works and this is supposed to be in the society the proof of talent so I too will lay it out on the table at this moment and let it go at that. In my own work talent is not something that is a concern. Uh, a film, uh, I'm very anxious for instance with my children when they are untalented to give them eight millimeter cameras and begin teaching them enough of the mechanics so that they can start searching and making films of their own. Will there be any way to equate to decide who is more talented, themselves or myself, in this sort of a situation? Um, I'm not Are saying their films will be... There is now, no if you way. mean as an artist, am I talented? I mean, I don't know how you're going to evaluate this either. I'm, well, I'm let, learned, let's say, I've could studied, you do it I'm with your dedicated. three children? Well, no, the art process is something different. I wouldn't. The, the, what the children would do with their cameras would, would not be an, an art process. Maybe what I'm doing isn't either. What's wonderful is when this question dissolves and vanishes altogether, as in a case like Simon Rodia and his towers. Is he an artist? How will Herr Professor categorize those towers? Will they be put uh, in this card catalog drawer or that one? Or how can the vultures earn their living off of them? I'm not concerned with talent in any of these senses or whether it's a work of art or not. Simon Rodia made great immense beauty out of his own particular necessity. He's an ideal to me and, uh, uh, in this sense. And, and in a way, all of us that work, we may be more or less involved with the public for other reasons, for 
feelings of responsibility or that we have something that's needed. And uh, these are distractions in relationship to the work.